That's the fourth time this week. They seem so real. I wish I could forget. I want to forget. I want to start again. But no, I still remember it like it was yesterday. reminds me of my inane obsession. It's where it all started. If I could go back now, I'd tell myself to wake up and realize how foolish I was being. But there's nothing I can do now. I'm sure Russell won't mind if I borrow a few things. We're great friends after all.
Yes, Russ, my old friend. We were like two peas in a pot, inseparable familiars, until I told him of my motives. Understandably, he didn't want anything to do with me from then onwards. So, of course, he couldn't be trusted. I need to test this while it's still fresh. What have I done? do to him.
still haunts me. It was the most terrifying experience I'd been through since the start of my experiment. To be honest, it did make me rethink my obsession. Was this all a little too far-fetched, or was I onto something? Of course, I was distracted from these impeding thoughts. I had more important matters to attend to. There you are, back where you belong, you disgusting animal. It's feeding time. I better get some supplies. I think I started to procrastinate. I wanted this potion so bad, but I couldn't figure out a way to make it work. 
I didn't want myself turning into a hideous monster, that's for sure. I needed some help, some guidance. That's where reading helped. This book, I'd been reading it in my bed every night. The author spoke of a chemical, of which the name was all I'd heard of before. This was it. I was onto something. But where to get it? Who was the only person I knew who knew more about chemistry than me? I hope he's written back. I suppose I'll write back to Russ, to thank him. from the drawer. Every time I saw that book, it sent shivers down my spine. You see, my father gave me that book before he died. After my mother diagnosed him with cholera, I expected to see her devote every bit of energy towards making him better. But it wasn't enough. We were very alike, my father and I. We understood each other. And after his death, I sort of drifted for a while. I no longer knew my purpose, and depression quickly became bitter anger against my mother. It was my belief that she didn't do enough, that she didn't try hard enough to make him better. Of course, I was blinded by dejection, and I needed someone to blame. I wasn't thinking straight, and I hated death with every bone in my body. I wanted to use every bit of knowledge in my brain to get rid of it once and for all. I wanted immortality. This is perfect. This is it. I've finally done it. What's 
should have worked. I need to lie down. I need to lie down in my bed. from my holy grail. My father always used to say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. This was the one time this motivating and positivity inducing proverb was counterproductive. Every attempt I made at immortality was worse than the last. It was time for acceptance. It was time to give up. Oh, God. What happened? What's that noise? Could it be? The prisoners? No, no! It can't. They know. They know I'm here. It was then that I realized how foolish this all was. Only when I was at my most vulnerable, when I was so close to death for a long enough time, was I able to see clearly again? I remember sitting down and thinking of my father. Is this what he would have wanted? I picked up the book, and with a tear in my eyes, I started to read. It was his favorite book. He would read it every night before bed. My father accepted his fate. He was strong and brave and accepted that he will die. But me, I was weak, I was tired, and I was done. I got up, took a deep breath and accepted my fate. Images of what might be waiting behind that door flashed through my head and anxiety filled my body. This was it. I was ready. <laughs> 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 